Hey guys, welcome to ITS Tactical. Today we're going to be taking you through a do-it-yourself coiled paracord lanyard. And if you've ever seen these before, um, essentially what this is is just one of these cheapo plastic coiled keychains um, wrapped with a sheath of paracord. Uh, we're going to go through the steps on how to make one of these, show you what you need to get started, and let's get right into it. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of things you're going to need to get started. One, you're going to need one of these cheap plastic coiled lanyards. Got this for about a buck sixty or so at Home Depot or Lowe's. I can't remember which, but both of those places should have these things. They're uh, around where you get the keys made. So you're going to need one of those. You're going to need some real paracord. And by real, I mean it's got the seven strands in there that you can pull out. And it's got a, an outer sheathing and inner core strands. Then you're going to need some heat shrink tubing. Um, would recommend starting out with a 3 16 heat shrink tubing and you can actually go smaller depending on what your end result is. I actually went with the smaller tubing on there and we'll get into that once we get into the heat shrink tubing. Then you're going to need a Eurotastic hair dryer like this one here or a heat gun to melt the heat shrink tubing to the ends here once you crimp those off. And then you're going to need some kind of multi-tool or a pair of pliers or something. Uh, you might have to wind up bending the end. I'm actually going to try this one here without bending the end at first, and if we have to, we will, and that's where the pliers will come in handy. Then you're going to need some kind of scissors or something to trim off some of the frayed ends that happen on the paracord as you're pulling that sheath through this. So now that you know kind of the pieces that you need, let me kind of explain what we're going to be doing. The first step is obviously going to be removing this little thing right here. You can toss that away. Then we're going to take the split rings off the end, or each end of this. And you're going to need these, so don't get rid of them. And after that, what you're going to do is you're going to measure out a piece of paracord. So I had started out with about an 8-foot piece of paracord when I did this. Um, I actually only cut a seven foot piece this time just because I think it's, uh, when you stretch this thing all the way out, um, it only gets to about five feet and you need a little extra at the end, but at the same point you don't want to get too much because it, it becomes kind of a nightmare at the end to cut off. Um, and you'll see that once we, once we get this started. So I have already got a piece of paracord prepped here. So what I've done is... I've taken one of the inner strands of my seven foot piece of paracord here and I have tied one end to a split ring and the other end to a split ring. And you can see the sheath is still here but there's only one strand remaining inside of this seven foot piece of paracord. And this is kind of the, the tricky part. Um, the first time I kind of screwed this up a little bit. I had to actually wind up weaving a single strand through the sheath of the paracord because I accidentally pulled out all the strands. So I'm here to tell you don't make that stupid mistake and um, what you can do is actually pick a strand, tie a split ring to it, and then start to pull all the other ones through and obviously the one with the split ring isn't going to come through. Um, and it's a lot easier than it sounds, trust me. It's kind of a pain in the butt because the the individual strands of uh, the inner strands of paracord kind of get choked up inside of the sheath as you're trying to pull them out so it does take a little time to prep that's why I kind of did it ahead of time but so what you're left with is the two split rings a single strand of paracord inside of that seven foot sheath and what you're going to do is remove one split ring and I'm going to just trim off this tied end that I have here and I'm going to tie it onto one of the ends of this. This cheap plastic cord here. Make a couple of knots. And these are just going to tie some overhand knots. They've, uh, they work pretty sufficiently for the last one I did, so no use uh, over killing the knots at, at this point in the game. You just want something that's going to stay on there really well. 
So I'm going to trim off the excess because we're going to be pulling the sheath over this thing and the, uh, the less we can have sticking out the better. So now that we have this tied off, I'm going to cut away. I'm going to hook this thing up. Um, actually, let me say one more thing. The other split ring is going to go over this end. So you have one split ring, a cheap cord or cheap cable attached on to the single strand of paracord through the sheath, back out the other side, hooked onto another split ring. So let's cut away, I'll hook this thing up, and we'll go from there. Okay, so as you can see here, I have got our seven foot strand here hooked up to, on that split ring, wrapped around the leg of, I'll show you here, it's just a little stand unit here, here at the office at ITS headquarters. But what we're going to do is, now that we have our strand wrapped, so it's tied on to the cheap plastic thing here. I keep calling it cheap, but you know, hey, it's dollar sixty. So one thing I did forget to mention is that you're going to need a lighter, obviously, for some of this stuff. Um, and if you can look at this, this little piece of red plastic, let me zoom in here so you can see this better. This actually sticks out a little bit, and I'm actually just going to melt that down. Um, definitely be careful about your st string that's in there, too. And the reason I'm doing this is just so it doesn't get hung up on, on the paracord as I'm pulling it through. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to grab our sheath here, and again, like I said, I'm going to try this first without having to bend this metal piece, but on the one I did before, I had to kind of crimp that metal piece a little bit to get it through this sheath, but we're going to, uh, to give it a shot here. And the thing to remember as you're pulling this through, I'm going to come around to the other side here, but the thing to remember as you're pulling it through is that the less you can, uh, I guess, pull out this this thing, the less you can deform this, the better. Because once it's kind of deformed and out of place, it doesn't like to go back immediately. And as our contributor, Justin, wrote in the article, he's kind of helping me do this video, or not the video, but the article for this, uh, this Knot of the Week. But as you can tell, as you'll read in the article, um, he states that something he did to, to reform this again after you pull the the sheath over is to wrap it around a pencil or something to uh, to get the form back. So here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to pull this over here. And it looks like it's giving me problems here. I think I may have to go ahead and crimp it a little bit to help get it through here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so grab the multi-tool here. And all I'm going to do is just pinch it just a little bit in the middle here. see how well that works. I remember when I did the first one, it was uh, definitely getting hung up on me, just like it kind of is now. So I know once I got past a certain point, the start, it was a lot better. There we go. It's starting to slide on there now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this on, and it's going to take some time. As you can see, it just kind of twists around there, and every once in a while you have to kind of pull it and twist it at the same time. So one thing to be cautious of, too, is the actual twist in the paracord sheath itself. You want to try to keep that as consistent as you can. Because if that gets kind of twisted around like this as you're pulling it on, 
um, it, you can wind up kind of deforming it as you're wrapping it on. But since this takes quite a while, I'm going to actually time this, see how long it takes me, and uh, not force you guys to sit through it. So we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back now. Um, I've got about 8.24 on my watch. That's how long it took me to, to pull this around. Um, and you can see this is kind of, kind of a cluster right now. Um, one thing that the end typically does as you're pulling is it frays a lot. It winds up looking like a Wookiee at the end here. As you can see, looks almost like a uh, fishing lure or something. So anyway, what we're going to do now is trim off the ends right here um, near to the crimped end. And the other end is buried right in here. So we're going to have to, and as I was saying, that's quite a, that's almost a foot, I'd say, that's left over that we're going to have to trim off and cut off there. But I'm going to bring this back to the table. We're going to clean this thing up, and we'll finish it off. Be right back. Okay, so we're back. Let's finish this thing up. I've trimmed the ends just a little bit to uh, make it less hairy here at the, the end here. Um, our first step is going to be bending that thing that we squished a little bit to get it through the paracord sheath at the end here. I'm going to bend that down a little bit, or back to normal. Flatten them back out. Okay, now we're going to... So basically, I want you to see where I stopped the stopping point of that paracord. And you can see I've already burned it a little bit on this end. So that's what I'm going to do the other end. I'm just going to melt it down to where it's touching that metal part. And I'll show you the end result here. And you want to be really careful with your lighter because if you heat this thing up too much, remember that under this tip is a plastic insert or the, the plastic part of, of the, uh, the cheap plastic lanyard. So if you melt it too much, it will come apart and you have to start all over again and buy yourself a new $1.60 lanyard. Okay, so while I'm burning this part down, what I'm also going to do is heat up this just a little bit, take my pair of scissors and I'm just going to kind of pull out a piece of that plastic that was in here just to free up a little more space there in the end. Um, just clean that up a little bit. Don't want any of this uh, colored stuff hanging around if we don't have to be, have to have it be that down a little more. And that should do it. Okay, so at this point, actually I'm going to melt that one down too. Yeah, it's sticking up a little bit. But at this point, we are now ready for the heat shrink tubing. So you can get out your Euro style hair dryer like I have here and uh, get that plugged in and prepped. And I'll show you what we're going to do here. The heat shrink tubing. All we're going to do is cut a piece here and I'm going to see if this heat shrink tubing, the smaller stuff, is um, able to be slid over here because this is the size I used with the last one. And I had to really work it on here. It, did, it definitely uh, was a little too small. So I am going to go with the larger stuff. And uh, we'll see how well it does. So I'm just going to cut a piece roughly, I'd say maybe half inch, three quarters of an inch here. So that's what I'm going to use here on the end. And just remember as you're heating this up, not to pull too hard on it because what you're also heating up is that plastic that's underneath. So I'm actually going to cut a little off this here. Use a little less. 
So at any rate, what you need to remember is not to pull too hard on this while you're heating. Because if you heat up that plastic underneath, it can pull free from, from the end crimp here. And you definitely don't want that to happen. If that does happen, um, you are going to have to start all over again. But if you can feel it happening before it actually pulls away from it, um, you can let it cool and it should get back to normal. So I'm going to line this piece of heat shrink tubing up so that it comes a little below the end of this, just like so. And we'll heat that up and see how we do here. drop it and have to reset it a bunch of times. Okay. So you can see the heat shrink tubing seized up pretty good on there. Um, we've got just enough to put a little small split ring on the end there. And that will strengthen it up even more and keep that paracord from pulling away from that connection. And we'll do the same thing on the other side and I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're back. I've got the heat shrink tubing melted on both ends. And you can see that there. Uh, one thing that I am noticing is that my my end is not as gnarled as the one that I first made. But uh, there you go. It's a pretty simple procedure. Uh, it does take a little bit of time. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass to pull that sheath around the coiled plastic lanyard. But at the end of the day, you have a nice looking paracord lanyard um, that you made yourself. So there you have it. Don't forget to uh, check out other than not of the week videos and check out more information on ITS Tactical for a full article write-up. And thanks for watching.